Despite the widespread use of potent antiplatelet agent and statin, the rate of recurrent ischemic events within 2 to 6 months after the, an initial episode of acute myocardial infarction and unstable angina remains high at 12 to 20 percent. The first association between microorganism and coronary artery disease came from a study in Finland which showed that high titers of IgG and IgA antibodies to chlamydia pneumonia occurred significantly more often in men with myocardial infarction and chronic artery disease than in age match randomly selected controls. While serological data elicit some general interest in the topic, it was an, the unexpected finding by Alan Shore of Johannesburg that created much interest. Using electron microscope, he noticed chlamydia-like structures in the wall of coronary artery obtained at narcopsy. These findings were confirmed using PCR. The possibility of the role of chlamydia in pathogenesis of coronary artery disease were further strengthened by an animal study in which intranasal infection of rabbits with chlamydia was shown to induce or accelerate the rate of atherosclerosis and further still azithromycin prevented the acceleration of atherosclerosis thus induced. Considering this, a multicentric mega trial wizard was initiated in which favorable trend was noted in CAD patients during and shortly after three months of azithromycin treatment. But long-term benefit were not seen. Now, taking into account the hypothesis that chronic infection with chlamydia is atherogenic, either the dose of azithromycin prescribed in result was grossly inadequate or the disease CAD was in an advanced stage. I challenge the wizard 2003 trial on the logic that had the negative outcome been due to an advanced stage of the disease no significant antibiotic protection even during the initial six months of the trial would have been observed. So, in my opinion, what probably went wrong in the wizard was inadequate regime of azithromycin. And as chronicity is the hallmark of chlamydia infection that is susceptible to macrolides, a trial with an optimum dose of azithromycin seemed justified taking into account the public health importance of CAD. In this study, 40 patients with documentary evidence of CAD were enrolled with add-on azithromycin after screening visit, visit at which chlamydia pneumonia antibody titer were measured. Patients with IgG titer of 1 is to 16 or greater were assigned to receive oral azithromycin in the dose of 500 mg once a day for 5 days and repeated with a gap of 10 days, total 24 such, cor such courses in a year. 32 patients with positive IgG titer received azithromycin, of which 30 completed the trial without any untoward event, while remaining two had to undergo percutaneous coronary intervention in the first quarter of the year. In the control group, eight patients with negative titer, one died in the trial, one had to undergo cabbage, and one had percutaneous coronary intervention. Several mechanisms have been suggested for which could contribute to atherogenesis, including cytopathologic effects of infection on endothelium causing endothelial dysfunction, formation of circulatory toxins or immune complexes that deposit on the vessel wall eliciting an inflammatory response or induction or alteration in serum lipid metabolism or all of the above. The length of the treatment was a difficult question. Knowledge of biology of chronic chlamydia infection suggests short period treatment will be inadequate for a lasting benefit. Thus concluding, azithromycin and chlamydia pneumonia might bridge in the therapeutic and etiological lacuna in CAD if results of this preliminary controlled trial are replicated in future mega trials. Thank you for your patience.